Hello everybody, I'm back with another video for you today, and this time I'm going to be looking at some of the best cards to craft, mostly gold cards, legendaries, epics, uh, but also a couple of bronzes that are really really good here and there, just to help out some of the new players or returning players that might have been uh, interested in Gwent as a result of the Android um, release. So figured this was a good time to do that, uh, so there will be you know, deck videos coming in the coming days, don't worry. Uh, I've got you guys covered on that, but for now, let's talk about some of the good cards to craft. Now, bear in mind, not all of these cards will be, you know, top, top tier in every deck, especially for things like neutral cards, and maybe even some of the faction-specific cards. You might consider not running them in some top decks, maybe certain decks uh, playing for a different archetype. I'm going to try to explain when these cards are good in a little bit of detail, but I want to also rush through because there are quite a lot of cards here and I don't want the video to be too lengthy. So let's just jump straight into some of the neutral cards that you might consider crafting. Uh, the golds that are pretty good and can pretty much go in any, you know, early deck uh, or working your way towards getting a top tier kind of refined and optimized list. Uh, one thing you probably want to keep in mind is Magic Lamp as a stratagem. This is pretty good to craft. A lot of decks will use the lamp rather than tactical advantage. There's a small advantage to actually uh, playing the lamp instead. It just doesn't play into tool removal as much that the opponent can have. Making your unit's higher strength is usually worse than just getting this, you know, five-point guy on the board. So that's a small thing, but if you have scraps to spare, then maybe consider uh, investing them in the Magic Lamp. That will help out a lot of your decks. Only a little bit, but, you know, it's, it's a marginal difference that will uh, help you there. Uh, so other than that, we have several golds. The first couple here are Royal Decree and Azaz Double Cross, and also Mata Curie. These are all consistency cards. They are neutrals that you can pretty much throw in most decks. Azaz Double Cross is a bit questionable in some. You're going to have to, you know, put this in a deck where you're playing high strength units that you want to pull out with this. But the other two cards, Mata and Royal Decree, can be thrown in pretty much any deck, to be honest with you. Just very solid, going to get you the, the best cards that you need in the specific moment. Uh, now, a little bit less good, but still quite strong. We've got Morale. He has played in a lot of Poison decks. If you're running Poison cards, you definitely probably, well, probably want Morale in there. There are some decks that do run Poison without running him, so he's not super important as a neutral craft, but if you're thinking about, you know, f you know, completing this and getting all of the suggested cards here, then Morale's kind of one uh, on the lower end. Same deal with Caretaker, he can be good in a few decks. He's quite a decent card just to throw in an early deck if you don't have a lot of the cards, you know, if you're, uh, you know, just starting out. Caretaker's very good, he can purify Bleeding, he can uh, purify Poison, the enemy Defender, things like that, and just overall a, a pretty good value card that will uh, help to, you know, uh, shut down certain things from the opponent. Same kind of story with Heatwave, just an okay card, can get rid of that problematic uh, unit or, you know, uh, engine that the opponent's got on their side of the board. Just an okay card you can throw in most decks and it'll be alright. Obviously these kind of three cards are not going to be in every top tier deck, in fact they'll probably be in only a few top tier decks, uh, but they are just good all around cards that you could put in sort of more budget style decks, uh, and there are top tier decks that do play these cards. Okay, let's move on to the factions now. Uh, so first up let's talk about the syndicate cards that you might want to craft if you're interested in playing the faction. Uh, now first up we have Passiflora, the scenario. This card is very very strong, it's arguably one of the strongest kind of cards in the game in terms of point potential. So if you play Syndicate you can definitely consider this one, obviously you need Blind Eyes to trigger it but that's not a problem for Syndicate decks. Um, most importantly for Syndicate I would say is Madame Louise and Savola. These two cards, you want them both together, craft them both together, they're very very powerful. Uh, working in conjunction, Louisa triggering uh, the tribute of Savola for free so you get a ton of points for a very uh, you know, relatively small provision count. So these two cards go very well together. I would recommend crafting these two first for Syndicate. Then we've got Philippa, just a very, very good card. Allows you to spend your coins in this faction. That's a another card that you really want to get. Defender is also quite strong. That's probably a little bit less down on the priorities along with the Flying Redanian. These are just very solid cards. Uold as well. Uh, Uold is probably a bit higher priority because he's a, a bit cheaper. He's a epic rather than a legendary. Um, but if you have the scraps and you're focusing on Syndicate, then all of these cards are definitely very good and pretty much going to be played in every kind of solid Syndicate list that you're going to see. Same deal with Soul and same deal with Fist Tech. Just all around good cards. There are a few more Syndicate cards that you can craft, obviously. Uh, maybe check out someone's deck guide. I have, a, I have a deck guide on the channel for a Syndicate deck that's pretty strong, but there are plenty of YouTubers and streamers who can show you uh, a good specific deck. But these cards will be played in 
you know, most strong syndicate lists. All right. Let's move on to Nilfgaard. Nilfgaard is a bit of a weird one. There are kind of two... Oh, I'll just refresh because we've got some bugs on the, uh, on the screen. Uh, but there are kind of two ways you can do Nilfgaard at the moment. This might change with, you know, coming patches and stuff. But right now we've got Soldier Nilfgaard and we've got Poison Nilfgaard. I haven't included the Poison cards because that's kind of a weaker archetype. So I'd maybe focus on Soldiers and trying to, you know, build up that archetype for yourself. If you're doing that, these are kind of the key cards that you'll play in any kind of Soldier or Imperial Formation focused deck. If you are playing Imperial Formation, you'll want to also craft the Afan here. He's a very good legendary, allows you to play the Imperial Formation leader. In fact, let me just throw that in. That probably should have been in there as well. Um, these cards kind of all go together, you know, the Afan, the Stefan, and the Damien. Although they're quite decent standalone, probably you can make them work in a more budget deck. But you really want to play these guys with the Imperial Formation leader to get the really maximum value, protecting your five point guys, getting a fan out, very, very strong. The other cards can be played in a lot of different styles of Nilfgaard. Uh, Raymond is just typically quite good if you have a couple of soldiers. Bribery is just good in general. It's even better with Stefan. Swears is a very, very good all around card. Hefty Helga can find a spot in Imperial Formation, in Slave decks, uh, and probably even Masquerade Ball if you have enough tactics. So same kind of deal with Menno. These cards are all just very good. And of course, you can think about playing the ball scenario if you want to do a poison deck and stuff like that. But this is kind of what I'd say is important for Nilfgaard. All right, let's move on. Just going to try and burst through the factions because there's quite a lot to cover. Next up, Skellige. So Skellige typically tends to rely on the scenario at the moment to get a lot of its value. And Wild Boar of the Sea. These are kind of two of the very important cards. Important finisher value cards for Skellige at the moment. You can play other decks. You can play maybe Beast. Skellige, which doesn't necessarily, although that being said, it does use Giddeneth. Um, but a lot of decks are going to have one or other of these, uh, you know, finisher cards, maybe even both. So those are quite important, very powerful. Crow Mother's another one that is a very, very key card. A lot of carryover value can be gained from that. Just a good, good round one play, good, uh, good points in general, good card in pretty much any deck that runs an alchemy or two. And speaking of alchemy, you do want to craft Giga Scorpion Decoction, I think, if you don't have it. Very good answer to a lot of cards, just a good value six. Can be tutored with Ermion, that's another card you can think about crafting, although I don't think it's necessarily, um, you know, uh, something that you need to craft. Uh, unlike Gremist, Gremist is pretty much just very good in most decks. He's like a caretaker, but a little bit better in Skellige. Uh, a little bit toned down, but he's cheaper in provisions, and he's a druid working with your scenario. Morkvarg is another one that you can throw in pretty much any deck. He'll just get good value, going to knock down the enemy tall units. Hammond, again, similar deal, and Raiding Fleet. If you have boats, Raiding Fleet is a must-have. It's a very, very, very powerful card. Just four free points on your kind of uh, boat play. And then Savage Bear is just the kind of nutty bronze for Skellige. If you don't have these, you should definitely get them in your deck. Uh, they're very, very strong. All right, that's kind of the Skellige cards. Next up, we've got Squirtel. Squirtel's also a bit of a weird one. There's multiple ways you can play the faction, and the, the archetypes for Squirtel are very defined and different. You can either kind of go the Elf route, or you can go the Harmony route. If you do go the Elf route, you're going to need Oak. You're going to need Venosil, you're going to need Isengrim, Aelorin, and Yavin. Those are kind of the key cards. You can also think about running Fain Death if you're playing an elf package. Uh, that, the scenario works very well with that stuff. Maybe Rodea as well. But the elves kind of go well together. Or alternatively, you might want to run the Harmony package, which involves Waters of Broccolon, Percival, and a lot of other Harmony cards, which tend to be more uh, focused on bronzes. There will be some golds that are important there, but I'm not going to talk too much about them. Overall, I would say Weeping Willow is a pretty safe craft for the faction. It's going to be played in most, if not all, decks. And same story with Great Oak. Very, very powerful cards. Uh, and Percival, you can play him even in Elf decks. I've seen him and I have played him myself in, in some versions of Elf Squirtel. So there's some crafts there that are pretty overall just good and a few that are a bit more, um, you know, depends what kind of archetype you want to play as to which of these you should craft. But, you know, elves are very strong, so maybe focus on that and trying to get these and not so much the Water of Broccolon or the other Harmony cards. Okay, now on to monsters. Monsters, I don't have so many cards for them here. Hold on, let me just refresh again. We've got the bug. I'm not sure when they're going to fix that. It's been around for a long time, but whatever. Um, so yeah, here we have basically just some thick boys, which you really need. Egan, Goliath, Osrael. These are kind of the key cards, the backbone of monsters, the finisher value, the really, really just powerful, you know, 13 for 10, like 14 for 9, 10 for 8. Very, very powerful cards. 
you probably want these in every monster deck you're ever going to play, to be quite honest. At the moment, at least. Um, now we have Glusty Warp in here. This is a card that you can play in some monster decks. It's not always good. It's good if you're playing Arrakis Swarm, and you definitely need it if you're playing Arrakis Swarm. Otherwise, it's not necessary, and it's maybe not even good. But I, I thought I'd throw it in there as a noteworthy inclusion. Other than that, we have Adastriga and the Beast, who are two incredibly strong 7-drop cards. You probably want these in almost every monster deck as well as the big chunky lads. And then Lava as well, which is a really killer bronze. Um, these are kind of cards you're going to find in every 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 single monster deck, I would say, uh, that's at least quite optimized and quite strong. Blasty Warp, not so much. And this stuff might change with the coming you know, leader patch, which will introduce some new leaders uh, and maybe tweak some cards around. Maybe Spear Tip will become a good card to craft because I think he's getting buffed by a provision. But we'll see what comes of that. Monsters really just got to focus on these big boys. And then the rest is, you know, you can mix and match. You can play organics. You can play adrenaline rush stuff. Or you can go down the route of blood scent or even some kind of Kiki more uh, Caranthia deck. There's just a lot of options for monsters. So once you have these kind of core cards, then you can uh, find a deck that you like and uh, focus on building towards that. And then finally, we have Northern Realms, which... A lot of people say is the weakest faction at the moment. Uh, it might it might be the case, but uh, they definitely do have some powerful cards. Draug is a very, very strong finisher. If you're able to set it up and build your deck somewhat around it, then that's going to win you a lot of games. Um, you know, particularly if you're kind of at the lower ranks or just starting to build your collection up, Draug can find place in, in a budget deck of sorts if you have enough humans to make him work. Should be fine. Uh, we have a lot of just really powerful legendaries. The Philippa, the Falibor, the Bloody Baron. These guys fit in any any Northern Realms deck, really. As long as you have provisions for them, which most decks, you know, will be able to make space for, especially if you're still, you know, building up your collection and, and finding cards and whatnot. These guys are always just going to get great value. Uh, they're going to be able to kill the opponent's units, get points on your side of the board in the case of Falibor and Baron, and just really shut down what the opponent's doing. Uh, while, while, you know, getting new points as well. Same kind of deal with Sheila, just a good value epic card to craft, and Vincent. These guys are never going to be bad in a deck. They might be a little bit iffy, you know, maybe you only get seven or eight points from Vincent sometimes, or even a bit less, um, but they're never going to be bad in a deck. They're always going to be at least decent, if not really good. Uh, and Radovid's Royal Guards, kind of just a decent bronze. You're going to play this in, I think, every Northern Realms deck I've seen will have at least one copy of this guy. Uh, just a good bronze that you can think about using. But a lot of the Northern Realms bronzes are very craftable. There's a lot, you know, like Adirnian Mola, for example, which is a good card. Enchantress, not too bad as well. You've got Caraballista in the fives, which is just good, um, etc, etc. So, uh, yeah, those are kind of some of the key cards for Northern Realms. Although that you will find decks that maybe don't run a Philippa or don't run this or that in order to play a little bit different uh, kind of composition. Uh, but yeah, you can't really go wrong with these cards. Alright, and that's going to be it for my suggestions on what to craft. Um, bear in mind some of that stuff might change, so check the date of this video and whether there's been a patch, uh, you know, in between, um, you know, watching this and, uh, and yeah, uh, me making it. Because uh, if there is, then you might find your crafting cards that are no longer very good. That is one of the unfortunate things about making Gwent videos. They do become a little bit redundant, uh, typically quite quickly. Uh, but we'll see. Hopefully that helps some of you new players or returning guys out there, or even experienced players. I don't know, maybe you uh, wanted a, a bit of a, an idea of what I think is good and craftable. But uh, either way, thanks a lot for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Bye.